today una go today una go learn ladies and gentlemen with Jesus joy let us welcome the general overseer of Calvary Bible Church pastor Olumide Emmanuel thank you for having me welcome, welcome sir, sir. Ah, yeah, thank sir, you where we see you in videos you know but it's it's so great to have you god bless you sir thanks for having me so um, pastor Olumide Emmanuel like i said is the author of many best selling books and he came bringing gifts yes this is the school of money and also how to create wealth as a career person. We go talk all these things today because we believe say people need to learn. And you also have the opportunity of getting this gift from him to us. We don't collect our own. Mm-hmm. Then from the Honest Bunch podcast to you. Just keep it in mind. Watch this till the very end. So Pastor Lumide, you get one question when I say I go ask you anyway when I see you. Thank God say we don't I don't see you here. <laughs> so I saw a video footage from <clears throat> your session at TEDx Jibou where you said that the greatest mistake you made was to get married as a poor man. Mm. And I want to mm. ask, given the prevailing economic situation, where people work hard, you know, but it would appear like they're struggling to break even, does this imply mm. that a poor mm. man cannot find love, should not find love, or a poor man is not entitled to <laughs> getting married? Oh, well, um, I think that must have been um, out of the fact that I probably shared my experience when I got married in mm. 1997. Um, you see, in life we grow. Like I said to people, life is lived forward but understood backwards. And many of us can be sincere and yet we are sincerely wrong. Mm. And um, it doesn't change the fact that you are sincere but you are still wrong because you just don't have the right information. So what had happened was then when I was getting married then, I was already a pastor. I got born again as a teenager. I became, I've been in ministry since I was a teenager. I became a pastor at the age of 21. And when I was getting married... Because I was a Christian, my heart is pure, I'm doing everything right. I just believed that everybody was like me. So mm. when you tell me something, I just believe you. Mm. Mm. But I didn't know that that is what they call being naive. Mm. Mm. Because when you are not experienced, you take everybody at their word, you think that everybody is like you, and then you become a victim mm. and a pawn in the hand of manipulators. Mm. So when I when I got into the relationship that I was in then, I was honest, ah, this is who I am, oh, this is my job, we are only 200 people, I don't earn salary, I'm just selling book, doing this, this, and this. Oh, no, money doesn't matter, I love it the way you are. I love it the way you are, it doesn't matter. And I fell for the trap. Hey. Because I just thought, that, okay, well, we'll make money, it's not a problem. But I didn't realize that I love it the way you are does not mean I want you to remain the way you are. Mm. Mm. I love you the way you are. Yeah. Does not mean I want you to remain. Yeah, the way I love you the way you are is a statement of faith. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love it the way you are, but it doesn't mean I want you to remain that way. Mm. Every woman, consciously or unconsciously, has a time frame in their subconscious mind of when things will change. But it differs from woman to woman. So when the woman is coming and say, ah, the way this guy they go now, I think say, if I suffer with her within two, three years, if I blow, mm. some people will say five years. Mm. So when that time expires in their so I'm suffering for three years. Three years, not in the show. Mm. Five years, they will now shift. Mm. So because they have that, so one, ah, so you mean that's not so good a day. Mm. You mean I'm going to just be like this all my life? Then depending on which age they are in again, mm-hmm. you midlife crisis enter, plus all this compa- comparison, na double wala. Mm. So what I was saying was that um, if I had the opportunity to do it again, I will not believe in that. Mm. To say, oh, I love you the way you are. Because I, I now got in there to realize that there's no romance without finance. The same person that was telling you it does not by money was now telling you, hey, you're not a man. And I said, ah, but I told you why. I didn't lie to you. Mm. At least because, you see, so I tell people, I believe in full disclosure. I believe in honesty in everything you do. Mm. It will help you to quickly identify whether you are in the right place or in the wrong. So if I let you know as my woman that, look, I earn 500 every month. This is, what I, this is my paycheck. This is my account number. This is my PIN number. If you are asking for something of 800,000, you are not a wife. You are a knife. Hmm. Because you already know what I can afford. Mm-hmm. But if I didn't tell you, and you are assuming, because women and children always assume that their man and their parents are richer than they are. Hmm. Children will think that my father is powerful. My father is because they are children. They are looking from that perspective. Mm-hmm. A woman will believe that, ah, this man, he must have something somewhere. Mm-hmm. But when you open everything, this is my account number, this is my pay slip, oh, then you will now know that, oh, she will take you the way. Because many times people think women are after money. Women are not after money. They are after security and honesty. So when you tell a real woman, this is what I am, they will help you manage it well. Mm. They will stay within it, pray for you to grow. But the one that is not a wife, 
will be asking for both straight, even though our own life is not straight. Mm. She will be asking for bag and shoe to match. Our own destiny is not matching her bank account. Mm. Waiting in Papa and Mama no fee give her. He expect you to come give her. Mm. I keep wondering. You mm. went to school, I went to school. You graduated, I graduated. You are working, I'm working. Seven years after graduation, you are meeting me. You want me to marry, you are asking me, do you have a car? Do you have a house? You, why don't you have a car now? She all of us done the salary for seven years. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do with your own money that will now be the one to come and carry all the responsibilities of your life? Because a lot of things, you know, culturally, I don't have, a lot of things are not right. Because in this world right now, a lot of men are groaning under the load of financial deeds, take care of wife, take care of children, take care of family of wife, family. They are dying. Many of them have erectile dysfunction. Men don't can do, they are under stress. And there's some other women too, they are carrying load. The men are just sitting down there, useless. Six packs, he doesn't have six figure. All he has is muscular <laughs> prosperity. Hey. Nothing to show. So there's so much trouble out there. So by the time they now relocate with all this jackpots in our wala good start. Hmm. Because many men in this part of the world have their identity is tied to their ability to provide. Mm. So once they are not able to provide, they believe they don't take man. So mm. those are just the, the things I was trying to say that look, as you are growing through life, make sure that you have clear understanding because once there's no money, there's no romance without finance. Interesting. You need money to fund relationships. So, so um, this thing is always a debate. And okay. I mean, you're a Bible person. So I'm going to throw this question to you, sir. What is the history or, I mean, it's, it's a debate. I say men were created to provide while women are created to be taken care of. Mm. What's your, what do you think? What's the history like from the Bible days, from Adam and Eve? Or from experience as from well. From experience. Okay, so when, when we look at um, different aspects of life, you see the Bible itself was written within the context of a culture. And that is one of the reasons why a lot of people also have problems because the Bible was built and written within a culture that is a patriarchal culture. So our culture is similar to the culture of the Jews. And that is why a lot of things, when you look at the Bible, you see, you see things like Jesus had 12 disciples, there was no woman there. If you go to a Jewish person's house, you don't have the right to greet the wife. If the wife is the one that opens the door, you can't greet the wife. Hmm. The wife has to go and call the husband. You greet the husband before you greet the wife. You see that, they say when you go to church, don't talk, let your husband talk. Why? Because it's a patriarchal culture. And because it's a patriarchal culture, many of us in this part of the world, we now carry that patriarchy. Instead of getting the real message, mm -hmm. we carry that patriarchy and we use it to begin to build religion here. Yeah. I say to people that religion is more dangerous than the devil. Mm. Because religion will destroy your life, ruin your life, and give you a hope that is not real. Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship with your creator. Mm. When you practice Christianity as a religion, you become a pawn in the hands of charlatans. You become a pawn in the hand of the religious interpretation of people. Because most of the things you need to understand is that principles are universal. Mm -hmm. So if you are bringing a principle from Bible that can only work in Africa, mm. that cannot work outside Africa, that's not what God is saying. Mm. It means you have brought your culture and your personality into the interpretation. Mm. Because, for instance, now, when we say, wife, submit, husband, love your wife, read the Bible. It says, submitting yourself one to another. Mm. It says, wife, submit to your own husband. It didn't say women should submit to men. Wife, submit to your own husband. So mm. if you are not yet married, it doesn't mean that men are better than you. Mm. Men and women are of equal value before the eyes of God. Mm. But when you enter into marriage, they have diverse function. Mm. So in marriage, you submit to your husband, not to a man. It's by functionality. It's mm -hmm. like going to an <clears throat> office. This is the CEO. Mm -hmm. It's not because the CEO is more intelligent. It's not mm -hmm. because it's older than you. It's a position. The status. It's a status. So you go in. So that does not now mean that the man should not submit to you when you have supreme argument. So that's why I say submitting yourself one to another. So if I'm married to a judge now and we have a discussion in the family, we want to get a house, we want to look at the documents. As the husband, ah, my babe, I better check. Now you be loyal we submit to her. Mm -hmm. She will look at it legally and say, babe, legally this is not that we are not doing. Even though you are the one bringing the money. Once she advises you legally, babe, you have to submit to her. Mm -hmm. So you so when it comes to this issue, when you look at Bible, in the Bible, there are many things that we cannot carry to bring into our culture. For instance, when you get married, it is expected that for one year you should not work. Only moon is one year. Is that in the Bible? Mm -hmm. And then you are supposed to take care of the woman, just be there. But all those things are not realistic now. Mm -hmm. Because the principle there is provide. That's provide. Hmm. And once you understand that, so when I'm trying to bring you from Bible before I go to history. So when you look at the Bible, the man is expected to be a provider. Why? Because the women were at home. 
not because the women could not work, but because of the environment they were in. Mm. And now, when you look at our ancestors, they were agrarian. In the Bible, many of them were agrarian people. So they were farmers. So in the morning, everybody goes to farm. And now you see in the book, School of Money, I wrote all these things are in the book, actually, the evolution of money. How we move from uh, the hunter gatherer stage to the agrarian chain to the industrial revolution, everything, so that people understand. Now, in those days, people had multiple wives. The multiple wives was not because they loved many women. It was an economic principle. Because the more women I have, the more children I can have, the more people I can have to help me on my farm. Mm -hmm. Because the bigger the farm, the bigger the plant. So many of us grew up where our great-grandfather had eight wives, 47 children. Mm. But you can't do that now to say, hey, my father was a political. You can't do that now. You need to understand that. Okay, let me give you biblical exegesis. Let me explain Bible to you so that you can take that as a principle. I like dealing with principles so that wherever you are, you just take the principle mm -hmm. and you're able to operate it. Because mm -hmm. the only reason why we see anywhere you go, apple is apple, orange is orange, is because there is a principle called the seed principle. Mm -hmm. So if you put that seed, it will produce the same result. Mm -hmm. So I go to principle. So what is the Bible? The Bible is the word of God written in the word of men mm. in history. So the Bible is God's word written in the word of men in history. So in order to understand the Bible, you need to do what we call biblical exegesis. Now, biblical exegesis, listen, <clears throat> is the careful, systematic study of the word of God to discover the original intended meaning so as to rightly apply it for the now. So you have to first find out, okay, when they said this, who said it to whom, when, why? Mm. When you now know why, you now say, okay, how does that now relate to me mm. today? Mm. That's why you can now interpret it. That's why many people, when you now say, eh, the provision, so for people now, they now think that because the Bible now says man should provide, it, it now means that women should not provide. It didn't say women should not provide, but what they may be providing may be different. The man may provide money, the woman provides support, mm. provide advice, provide structure, provide system, provide home, because a man buys a house, <laughs> is the woman that makes it a home. Do you understand now? Mm. So that's it. Then when you look at before the World War, everybody was working. But when the World War was to happen, they conscripted all the young men to go to battle. Mm. And the women were said, you have to stay at home to take care of the family. So all the men went to war. That is where full-time housewives, stay at home mom now started. So the men now went to war. <clears throat> By the time they now came back, many of the women were used to staying at home. And they just said, well, let me just stay, take care of the children. They accepted that. Some people would say, well, you boy are back now. Means I want to go and find the expression. They now started going out. They became career people. They became successful. And the men are still thinking, you should come and sit down with all your degree. And that is why we are having the clash of the titans mm. between the male and the female gender, just because of all this disparity. So in every relationship, once the two of you come together, two has become one. It doesn't matter who brings the money. Mm. I am not a man because I am the provider. I am the man because it is my responsibility. The word husband is house band. Mm. is to keep the place together, to make sure everything is structured, everything is done the way it's supposed to be done. So you are a woman. Because if you look at all those words, male, female. Inside female, there is male. Mm -hmm. Man, woman. Inside woman, there is man. Because when God created mankind, the male and the female gender <clears throat> was inside mankind. So the creation of Genesis 1 is creation of mankind. Creation of Genesis 2 is creation of male and female. So male and female were now separated. So the man is a man. The woman is a man with a feeling. Mm. Feeling man. The woman is a man with a womb. Do you understand now? So you can't look at a woman and think that, and be, no, 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 that's male chauvinism. You are not better than a woman. A woman is not better than you. We have diverse functions. But when people now carry all this uh, feminism thing, they now carry it to the extreme. I am a feminist. What is feminism? Feminism is everybody should be treated equally based on the value they bring. Mm -hmm. That is feminism. It has nothing to do with relationship. So no matter how successful you are, once you enter the house, you are a wife. You know, some ladies, <laughs> some ladies tend to draw back because of the society. Mm. And we have, there's, there's this thing that, that people say. I'm, I'm not going to call the name, but I'm going to make a reference to a particular event or wedding that happened, a particular union that happened recently. Obviously, the lady is more buoyant than the guy. And she took up the wedding and she made it her own. And the social media went agog a, a with, you know, people saying, no, you're the man in the relationship. Why is she acting like the man in the relationship? And 
if she's not somebody, I don't know how strong she is, but if she's not somebody that is emotionally strong, that thing could break a woman down. I'm like, okay, you guys say bring something to the table. This guy doesn't have enough. I'm bringing to the table and I'm bringing it loud. And you guys are complaining. As the one thing I would say to people is this. The, the, the social media is called social media. There is private life, there is public life. Mm -hmm. The very minute you take your private life into public, don't blame us for complaining. <laughs> Yeah, because we way. didn't come to your house to complain. The very minute you have brought yourself to public, you have given us the right to talk. So it's like somebody now, you know, this one that they will get married, they will say, I should be. So I buy I should be 70K. <laughs> <laughs> Three months later, I don't divorce. Now say respect you now tell me respect my privacy. At this, at this trying <laughs> time. <laughs> Try to <laughs> tell us <laughs> what Please, uh, don't wear that cloth anymore. Well, Let family now. Z eh? 70K. <laughs> <laughs> I pay for the cloth. I go wear her. You cannot say so. Because once you bring your case to the public, Mm -hmm. then you cannot say people should not talk. People yes. are entitled to their own opinion. You brought it to the public domain and that's why it's called public domain so that people can give their own opinion. It is their opinion. Whether it's right or wrong because if you look at the world we live in today, if you check the social media, you see that a lot of people are frustrated. Mm. Very, very. A lot of people are very daft, very unintelligent, very uncouth and with just 200 naira a time, 50 naira a time, borrow me credit, they will just be talking. I don't know, I was saying um, earlier on, you know, we're having a discussion with someone earlier today, and I was saying, that, have you noticed that when you post something online, and you say, okay, we're having a program on date, time, and venue, you start saying, so when is the date? When is the time? <laughs> that shows you that this person is an intelligent, an intelligent person. So once you have put it out there, you have given them the right to say whatever they want to say. If you are getting married, do you know that many of our parents, our mother were the one financing our father? Mm. Mm. We didn't even know. Our mother were the one. They say, your daddy has paid your school fees, so thank your daddy, oh, but they are the one that brought the money. Mm. They, so, but why do you have to bring it out now? <laughs> you want to show that you are the one. You want, mm. Then you are the one creating the problem. If you have money, must it be wedding? Wedding is for a day, marriage is for a lifetime. Mm. A lot of people prepare for wedding. Only few people prepare for marriage. And that's why you get into trouble. Wedding is just a day event. After that one day, what else? You finish, you spend all the money, no investment, nothing for the next generation. And then you now go back and say, which is a wizard are pursuing you, village people, when you are the one that has messed up your future by eating everything now. So I will not, anytime you take anything to public domain, whatever anybody will say, is their, is their right to say it. Okay. And, yeah. So, 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 so see this provision. scenario, sorry. Yeah. Okay. See this scenario real quick now. Um, the, the woman, like the example she gave now, the woman is more buoyant than the husband and they need to live together. What do you think? about a man moving to a woman's house. That is not our business. That is their business. Mm. As long as it is okay for them, the problem will now be to now bring it out to say, this is my house. Now, that woman that you said the man is moving to his house or her house, many of those people, the only people that know them are their family and their friends. Mm -hmm. I don't know how close you people are, but I'm almost certain you have not all been to each other's house. Mm -hmm. Almost mm. certain. Mm. You may know that the dude lives in that place. Uh, also, I'm saying I live there, but you have never entered. So you don't really know who is the owner of whatever house. Mm. So it is the information we now say, ah, that one is my babe house. So if a woman is living in a place, you are living somewhere else, you have met each other, and you have decided, ah, I'm on that place where you're there, you better out. Now, then you move in. Nobody needs to know. Let them be thinking. Mm. Yeah, maybe they don't buy them before. This... Maybe they have been dead. But when you now say, okay, he's moving to my house, you, can, you are the one creating problem for yourself. There's something about... So there's nothing wrong in a man moving to a woman's house because once you marry, two has become one. There's something about men's ego that they always say that men, they have ego, they have yeah. ego. Wouldn't that make the woman you see, look at that man lesser than he is? every man has ego. But the only person that can undo the ego of a man is the woman that he's in love with. Mm. And when the ego of a man is private, it will be managed. The only time the ego of a man can never stand is when you expose his ego to the public. I can tell you for free, there are many men whose wives have cheated on them. They are still there. They took the woman, hey, why you do that now? And I get it. They go first, first, they go keep the babe as long mm -hmm. as nobody's aware. Mm -hmm. The day somebody's aware that their wife cheated on them, they will leave that marriage. That's when ego comes up. Mm -hmm. If nobody knows, they will just, the baby, the baby go beg, uh, you know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, they go set one. Mm -hmm. So most egos become an issue when it becomes public because a man does not want to move around and be, somebody's looking at, okay, you know, get my wife as they leave. Uh, the only way the wife cheats with her way, sit down there like mungu. Those are some of the things that we need to understand. Mm. So as far as I'm concerned, many times we have accepted the stereotypes of life mm. and most of those stereotypes are actually the exception. Oh, all men are bad. All men are not bad. All women are after money. All women are not after money. These are just stereotypes that we have accepted. There are good cultured people out there that are living right, doing right, live working hard. But because we celebrate all this evil, it now becomes the norm. And that's what everybody's looking for. Interesting.
<laughs> interesting. So I I think I mean we started by explaining in detail. You know, you know, say this small, small video footage is where person they see. You go see 30 seconds, 60 seconds, mm. cutting. Say, even we self don't be, uh, we don't be on the receiving end of that. <laughs> but it's good that you have explained in detail and we have, um, you know, a very good understanding of that. Now, talking about stereotypes, mm. um, I would like us to talk about, you know, wealth creation because this, this, uh, wealth matter, this money matter, <laughs> now they always cause problem. You have also explained, you know, um, provision and how culturally you look at, um, the man, for example, and say you are the one that is supposed to do this. You are the one that is supposed even, to do that. Even by we say there's a part that say, I don't understand 100 percent where it says a man that cannot provide is worse than infidel. So a lot of people use it against their husbands. But that's not what that Bible is saying. Those mm. are the things that you say. That's not what it's saying. So I don't know if you for just open Bible because <laughs> see, many times we we read all those things. You see, the Bible is talking about different things. So when you when you look at Bible, the Bible talks about widows. Okay. And the Bible talks about different kind of widows. Okay. It says that there are widows that are young. If you are still young, go and remarry. Don't carry all your problem to church. Okay. But if you are a old widow that is so old, you cannot marry again. Let your family take care of you. But if you don't have any family, let the church now take care of you. Okay. Because if you have family, he that cannot take care of his own household is worse than an infidel. Oh. Mm. So if you have people within your family that you have the ability to help, and you are not helping them. You are worse than an unbeliever because the Bible says that if a man comes to you to ask for bread and you have it, don't tell him to go and come back tomorrow. Give it to him. Because what is the purpose of money? Money is nothing but a tool for the fulfillment of purpose. You are too small to be the purpose of God for your life. Mm -hmm. So everything you are, you can't drive, can you drive three cars at the same time? You will drive one to enter the second one. You can't sleep on more than one bed. You have to remove one to, so any money you have, is a tool. So to now carry, he said, can I take care of it? We are just, we just create unnecessary problem for ourselves because that's the narrative that people have pushed. Once two people have come together, that's one unit. Therefore shall Emmanuel, his father and mother and cleave to his wife, they too shall become one flesh. Once you have become one, any money that comes into that family is the household income. Yeah. Whether it comes through the man or through the woman, it doesn't matter, household income. But now now say your money is our money, my money is my money. No. Uh, Any uh, money that comes is our money. It's the household income. Uh, now, whether the money comes through the man or through the woman, it's not anybody's business. It's our household income. Mm -hmm. It's like Nigerian budget. But now, a lot of women say, I'm the only one working. The man is not bringing anything. His salary is small. I have more money. Okay, will you rather that none of you have money? Mm. That you are poor and he's poor? If God is true, you bringing in the money, at least we are happy that money is coming to the family. Mm -hmm. And then we are working on ensuring that his own life also becomes better. Mm. Because why is it easy for you to chop his money when you are <laughs> jobless, but you cannot chop your own when you have the money? Mm. <laughs> Do you understand now? Yes. A, woman, a man will pick up a woman that is mm. jobless, no school. You go polish the babe, send and go school, pay school fees, take care of her, take care of her family. That is okay. But mm. a, man, a woman cannot pick a man. Mm. And sponsor the man through and help the man. The only woman we don't hold nine go feed you. Even when the man <laughs> send the girl go school, the girl will come outside and say, You're not my you style. You're not my style. You don't have money, we don't cry for church. <laughs> <laughs> we no. don't spend money for the baby because you are not educated. <laughs> you, 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 you mentioned something before we get into because when we go talk still plenty, also my was even going somewhere with finances. <laughs> before he comes to the finances, you mentioned something that in the old times that a lot of people get married to more than one woman so that they can have more people in their household yeah. and um you know get more money and all those things now and also you mentioned that they may, the bible says that two 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 will come together and become one all those people they become one with this person one with this person one with this person they'll come become five wives <laughs> what do you have to say about that uh, well um you know in our culture like i said again when you look at the bible um you look at the old testament you look at the new testament so in the old testament you see a lot of things that are pronounced. In mm. the New Testament, they are not very pronounced. Mm. So for instance, um, a lot of people look at the patriarchs and they say, oh, they are polygamists. This one had three wives, this one had four wives. But you see, I'm a, I'm a Bible scholar, so I tell people, don't just read and then jump into conclusion. Mm. So when they say this person has three wives, four wives, how? How did he have three, four wives? So you say, for, for instance, now, they say, is Abraham a polygamist? Was he really a polygamist? Who is a polygamist? So we begin to go into all kinds of things that we should not even go. So Abraham had one wife. And side chick. That one wife now came and said, this girl will make him come become surrogate mother. Okay. And the girl came and became a surrogate mother. Mm -hmm. So there were now two women that have a child for him. 
He didn't marry a second wife. Okay. He married one wife. The girl was brought in as a surrogate. And then he continued to cut show with the babe. When it was time for the babe to move, the woman said, Nami, bring her. It's time for her to go. Abraham said, no, if you go, because it's not the sweet time. Mm -hmm. When he went to go, God said, mm, you didn't consult me in the first time. Mm. When she brought the girl, you should have come to consult me, should I? I mm. would have told you, polygamy is not my plan. This same woman will born for you. But you listen to her, so you must go and listen again. Send this woman away. When the first wife and only wife died, Sarah, he now married another one. Do you understand? So he did not, he was not a polygamist in the sense that he married three, four wives and kept all of them. So many times when we look at, I can go on each of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, I can go on and on and explain. Many times we just read it and we just want to see what we want to see because what's in there inside you? Solomon, go. Now you go, they look for. Now, let's go to Solomon. So the Bible says Solomon had how many wives and how many concubines? Uh, one, three hundred wives, seven hundred concubines. One thousand women. Think I'm. Think of, divide 1,000 by 365 days. Ah. And think of, is that, is, is, so well, let's not go into, so, but for me. So did they lie in that, huh? is that account a lie? No, it's not a lie. It's not a lie. It's exaggerated. Uh, it, it's, it's, the, it's their belief, you know, and when they say, for instance, now you know someone and the person, let's say, like you were saying earlier, that he doesn't have statistics. Mm. I don't know whether it was on the show yeah, before yeah, this idea. Yeah, before, yeah. Now, so now, if for instance that somebody is maybe we are seven friends, out of the seven friends, maybe three don't enter. They enter the babe. And then maybe we know one or two other people for streets, we don't pass by. Then they can answer that again. She sleeps around. Yeah. You don't sleep with everybody. Yes. But you know it's not actually everybody. Yes, 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 so, yes. so when it comes to the issue of people saying they want multiple wives or whatever, one woman is enough. One woman is enough. That's why when you now come into the New Testament, you see that he says anyone that, because even in the New Testament people have multiple women. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's why he said that if anyone now choose that you want to be a pastor, that's you when must you must be, be a husband of the one woman. Of my wife. Well, th that means that there were people that had multiple women. Mm, yes, but you cannot be having multiple. You now conscious you want to collect title again. You no, know, if you now carry that your man does rich church. No, you must be. Which means it was a normal thing for them to do it then. But if you want yeah. to become pastor, is it, there, is there you culture, must have only one woman. Thing. Don't forget that both the Jews and the Islam. Don't forget that Ishmael and Isaac, that is Muslim and Christian. The same father. It's the same try. So, and they can marry four wives. So those cultures allow a lot of things. They have air rims, they have all kinds of stuff. So one thing you need to understand is don't copy the wrong thing. Copy the right thing and look at the principle. We have one wife, and you say one wife is not enough. Most of the time, what you are thinking you are looking for is not there. Most of the time, you have 80% in your woman, you are looking for 20% that she doesn't have. And nobody is perfect. Mm. You now see somebody else that has the 20%. 20%, yeah. The 20% can't enter your high. You can't go leave 80, go pursue 20. When you now reach outside, you now discover that that one get 20, but she don't get 80. Mm. You now start feeling that ah, I need to go back to where I'm going because the grass is not greener on the other side. Mm. If you water your garden, it will grow. If you don't have what you love, love what you have. Talk about universal principles. And, you know, when people, the first thing that comes to mind when people talk about wealth is, you know, as much material possession that you can grab. Mm -hmm. And it would appear like for some people, if you know amass that plenty, you never start. You never go anywhere. But there are certain principles that one must follow and to be able to make this wealth and multiply or consolidate on this wealth. But it be like, say, for this part of the world, whether now our education or now the things when we know or now the way when our life just day, it just be like, say, we not understand what in that concept be. It would be nice to know what this concept is exactly okay. and why it would appear like there are, there are challenges in this part of the world. Okay, so um, principles are universal, but the application of those principles are personal, contextual, and geographical. What do I mean by that? The law of gravity is the law of gravity. Okay. The law of self-preservation is the law of self-preservation. Mm -hmm. The law of lift is the law of lift. So gravity is you jump off a story building, you come down. Yes. Whether you do it in Tokyo, you do it in Lagos, you do it in Kenya, Uganda, or in China. So that's the law. It's a universal principle. But that universal principle is personal. It's contextual and it's geographical. Personal in the sense that you may be on a two-story building, somebody else is on a 10-story building. Mm -hmm. If they jump, the same law will go. So, but that personal is different. Mm. You may be male or female, but it's the same law. Mm -hmm. It's also contextual. Your own context may be that you wanted to jump because mm. you lost your job. 
Some of them may want to jump because they were jilted. Mm. They serve them breakfast. Mm. But that's their context. So everybody, once you jump, the law will go to work, mm -hmm. regardless of the purpose. That's your context. Then geographical, mm -hmm. you may jump in Lagos. Somebody else is jumping in Los Angeles. The location is different, but the law will go to work. Mm. That's how principles are. Principles are universal. Mm. But when you want to apply it, it's personal, contextual, and geographical. geographical. So what everybody needs to know is what are the principles that govern wealth creation? Once you now know the principle, you now begin to apply it to your own personal life within your context and within your geography. So I will have to go back to um, the story of part of my life that led to what I know today. Okay. Um, when we're expecting my first child, my first child was born in 1998. When the pregnancy came, in the midst of all those g -g 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 -g, I now realize that more pregnancy don't enter. Even to pay house rent, you are believing God. To feed things now, you, call, you don't pregnant the woman now, no money. Mm -hmm. As the pregnancy was growing, my frustration was growing. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a man of God. I'm a pastor. I've gone born again since I was a teenager. I've been a missus since I was a teenager. I've been a pastor since the year of 21. Everything is moving on fine. And now I'm married. I'm expecting a child, but there is no money. So I'm like, ah. So at that point, I got angry with God. Ah, bah. I'm not lying. I'm not stealing. I'm not sleeping around. I'm not on drugs. I'm not doing nightclub. I'm not a fake pastor. Why am I poor? Oh, we have paid tight. They say, Peter, don't pay tight. Things are still tight. I give offering. I'm still suffering. I was angry with God. So it was that situation of you are not a man. You are dead. And the, as the pregnancy was going, my frustration was growing. I became depressed. I was almost suicidal. I became, ah, you mean all this where they preach? When it will happen for my own life? That was when in that anger, God, I, just, I kept hearing it, who told you, who told you, who told you? And I'm like, ah, what do you mean who told you? It's in the Bible. That's when I realized that majority of things I believe, like many people today, is what Papa said, Pastor mm. said, Bishop said. This is what our church believes. People don't know God for themselves. Mm. So people know church, they know pastors, they know religion, but they don't know God. And that's why we have so many churches here in our country still like this, because people are not regenerated. They, what we are doing now is what we call Pentecostal orthodoxy. People are just going to church because they're in the rain. Mm. Mm -hmm. so, so that's led me to say, God, okay, I'm tired. I, he said, if you want to be free, let me show you. And he said, go back to the Bible. And God took me from Genesis to Revelation and began to show me from Genesis principles of work in the Bible. I was shocked. Hmm. All the scripture, what you say, when would they read them? They would tell us, say, that, hey, occupy till I come. Now holiness, occupy till I come. Jesus will soon come. He said, read it from that side. He said, do business till I return. I said, hey, oh. hmm. And they said, hey, pastor, don't do business. Do business. Because we went to school. Imagine it. I hmm. went to school. I have certificates. Yet I said, God, come here. I can't sit down there. They said, they do full-time ministry, full-time foolishness. <laughs> Full-time ministry, God, that to tell me, say, you are just foolish. Mm. That who called you to full-time? Where did you see it in your Bible? Show me. Mm. I said, boy, it's there. They abandoned us. It's okay. Let me. So God now told me that full-time foolish, uh, <laughs> full-time ministry means that ministry, when I call you, ministry should be your primary assignment, not your only assignment. Mm. Mm. You don't go into full-time until your hands are full. Mm. You can't be a pastor in 12 and say you are full-time. You are just a jobless, lazy man looking for something. So those things, I studied, it started showing me from Scripture. From Genesis 1, it showed me, let there be light. So if there is, the only way you can say let there be light is because there was darkness outside. He did not acknowledge the darkness. Mm. What was inside there was what he spoke forth. Mm. So you have to imagine it and declare it and believe it and you'll see it. Principles were showing. He said different things. He said he separated the land from the, the water, waters. you have to separate what, you know, those are all principles. So from Genesis, mm. he was showing me, he separated the firmament from the land, separation, separate your gift from your talent, from your potential, separate your ambition, everything was showing me. He said, he made the sun, don't forget there was light, mm -hmm. let there be light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then on day four, he created the sun, mm. the moon and the star. Ah, ah, come, I thought there was already light. Mm. The first light is Shekinah glory, the light of his glory. The second light is the light of the element of the earth. Sun, moon, and star. He said he created the sun, the moon, and the star. The sun to shine by day, the moon to shine by night, and the star also. So he showed me that everybody can shine. Shine your shine, I shine my shine. Mm. It's all a matter shine, of shine. times and seasons. Mm. Somebody may be a sun, somebody may be, I may be, I may be a star, but everybody's created to shine. This is all from Bible. Mm -hmm. Then he called man, have dominion. I said, wow. So when I saw that, he mm. showed me different things from scripture. I said, okay. He now said, now that you are done, this thing, eight months ago, I was on a mad research. I read hundreds of biographies. He now said, now, who is the richest man in Africa? Who is the richest man in Asia? He asked me the question, who is the richest man in all the continents of the earth? Don't forget this 1998, no mm. Google, no social mm. media. 
to know the kind of rigor mm. that I went through, through. traveling, going to library, going to church. He said, I should go and study the life of every rich and wealthy man and family I can find on the face of the earth and study their life and look at this because in, <clears throat> there's a story behind the glory. Mm. Mm. There's what we call the iceberg principle. For everything that you see, the tip of the iceberg, iceberg is a mountain under the water. Mm -hmm. You see the tip, there is nine parts that you don't see. Under. So there are things that people do in secret that makes them to shine in the open. Mm. Whatever you see in the open is just a tip. When you get to them, they will now tell you the secret. Mm. Because everybody is using something. Just mm. be sure that what you are using is the right one. Everybody is using, using something. 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 Everybody mm -hmm. just be sure that the one you are using is the right, right one. Because if you are not using something, they are using something against you. Hey. Because you are either in the secret court or you are in the secret place. Mm. There is no middle ground. You are just mm. you are going to be like a chicken where they go kill for Christmas. Mm. They will buy you for January, feed you till November, kill you for December. Mm. So all the love they are showing you is to kill you in December because you don't understand. So when I now began to study all these people, I now saw all the principles that everybody, that was what led to my first book, how to be a millionaire now called Pathway to Wealth. And I now wrote that to the primary concerns of the church. Say, let me deliver the church from this foolishness first mm -hmm. before I now go to the world. Mm -hmm. That's when I now release School of Money for the world. Mm -hmm. So what, all the things I learned, I now learned like, what? You mean these things are inside Bible? Mm. He gave one gift. He gave one this. He went to bury his gift. That, I said, wow. So I now say, okay, all this is why I don't study. I will practice it for myself. So many things I noticed is number one, there is no rich man on earth that is a salary earner. There's no rich man on earth who is a salary earner. Yeah, no. None. Everyone that is wealthy today, they don't depend on salary alone. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Number two, there is no rich man on earth that has only one source of income. Never. Not one. Mm -hmm. Number three, every rich man on earth, all of them without fail, real estate is part of what they used to retain their wealth. Mm -hmm. So when I study, I say, eh? that's when I realized that ah, I don't discover the principle. I now apply it. My brother, in this same Nigeria, in three years, my story changed. Mm -hmm. I said, that's so easy. Why? Because let me use this to help pastors. Now, I was a pastor, full-time man of God. I've been a pastor, I've been a minister since 1988, 88, 89. And this now, I'm discovering this in 1998. To remember, I don't do the full time. Ten years I don't later. do anything. I'm called to ministry. We just want to serve God. I carry certificate. I drop I drop him. I was, when I started this church 29 years ago, the church I pastor now. I was full time. I was working. I left the job. Say, God, don't call me. I left job. <laughs> sat down. I will sit down at home in my mother's house in the courtroom. And then I will be sitting down. People will be going to say, ah, Pastor, good morning, sir. Uh, please, uh, I bought a wagon. Uh, the man didn't give me change. He's, he said, we come around <laughs> 11, but I don't go there. Let me collect change. True <laughs> life story. 1995. This was my life. When I started this church, 1995, they will do, hey, my, please, when you're, let me take key. I became an errand boy. So I, I, I began to ask, come, you are called, you are anointed, you are sitting down. Are you sure this full time thing is not foolishness? Mm. You mean that God called you to sit down to be collecting key and they were going to change? Go and revisit this thing. That's when I broke free from this full time something. So when 1998 now came, because see, you can be poor as a single man, but don't try it as a married man. No. Mm. Your eye go, you say, love is blind, marriage will open your eyes. <laughs> ah, you go, your eye goes. So when you see responsibility, mm -hmm. you see your responsibility. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when I noticed all those things, I put it so I was a pastor. But at that point, I now realized by virtue of what he taught me, that in order for you to become rich and wealthy, number one, you need financial intelligence, you need delayed gratification, you need savings, you need multiple streams of income. I now began to practice also. That's when I started writing books. I've written over 100 books right now. Mm. Now, but the books were already in me. So today now, you see a lot of people out there, they have gifts, but they are not trading their gifts. Mm. Money flows in exchange for goods and services. Money flows in exchange for value. So that's your gift. You must turn it into a product or a service that you can exchange for money. Mm. You can be gifted and poor. People mm. can celebrate you and say, we have a lot mm. of, uh, you know, poor celebrity beggars now that are just celebrity by because they say they are in show business. They know the show. They don't know the business of the show. Mm. Mm. But the business that know the business of the people that know the business of the show, nobody knows them. But they are the one making the real money. And that one is just doing bling bling, poor man out there. And then they will now begin to cry that they, they use me. When you <laughs> sign, your eye don't clear. They force you. It's poverty that made you to sign. You sign it as a poor man. Now you have seen glory. You now you, you will serve your sentence. <laughs> Do you understand now? So so I don't know if Yeah, yeah. no, this is this is really very, very eye-opening. <laughs> but I go like ask, you know. They go tell everybody, say, oh, go school, education, and all. People go, if we go by the, 
you know, the system in Nigeria here. Mm -hmm. Six years primary school, six years secondary study school. Study these, four study years economy, university. study banking and finance. And okay. the whole idea is once you acquire this education, you work for you somebody. Will break, you will break free from the shackles of poverty. You're good to go. No. And no. you are good to go. <laughs> but it won't be like, say, the school, what is the devil they teach us? Not be waiting. Okay, so le let's understand this. Because the challenge we have is that we don't realize that change is the only constant in life. Mm -hmm. What is true today may be a lie tomorrow, tomorrow. But it doesn't mean it was not true yesterday. Mm. Mm. What is true today may be a lie, a lie tomorrow, tomorrow, but it doesn't, but doesn't mean it was mean not true, true yesterday. Mm. It's because life is lived forward but understood backward. And as we evolve, we learn. Everybody here, there's one statement you have made in your life. Ah, if I know... If I knew what, what I, I know, know now, now. Yeah. everybody on earth, if you have never made that statement, you are a madman. <sighs> that means you are not growing. That is a sign of growth. Okay. Ah, Omar, if you say, I, know this thing, I would not have done that. I would not have done that. That means you are growing. Mm -hmm. mm. So when you have a single lady as a daughter, what will you tell the girl? Don't sleep with any man. No. Don't let a man touch you. It's true. You are not lying to her because at that season of her life, that was what she did to hear. But when she gets married, don't deprive your husband of sex. So make sure you just, you are, but, uh, mommy, are you not the one that told me? No, no, no. <laughs> now I'm telling you something else. Mm. So what I told you before was true. But mm. if I tell you not to allow your husband to touch you now, it's a lie. Mm. Mm. I'm ruining your life. I'm ruining your marriage. Mm. That's the way life is. So when they were telling us, don't forget, you see, people need to just get the school of money book, get all this book. You see, I explain all these things. The civilization we call civilization today started with what we call the hunter gatherer state, the caveman era. At that point in time, no school, no nothing. The only thing that people had was energy and skill. They were hunting, running after school, running after until running after all these things. That's all they had, and that's all they needed. If you gave that person $1 billion at that point, they would use a do toilet roll. Because true. it was useless to them. Not there was true. no shopping mall, no shoe, nothing. They didn't even know that anything was wrong. But when they evolved to the realm of agrarian age, when they evolved to the agrarian age, that was when land became important. Mm -hmm. People now started claiming land. Real estate is royal estate. This is the land you need to come to of occupancy, right of occupancy. That it was at that point that we started trade by butter. It was at that point that they started multiple wives, multiple children. It was at that time that slave trade came. All these things were all economic theory to survive. That is it. Then they evolved from that point to industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. It was during the industrial age that education came. Mm. So during the industrial age, education was set up to take people from the farming slave to factory slave. Mm. So they now say, okay, all the intelligent ones that are here now, let's gather them because this guy, like, he gets some brain. If you tell them something, if they know how to plant, if they answer, put them together and create a curriculum and teach them so that they will know how to undo the factory. Mm. Because from orange, we need to produce orange juice. Mm -hmm. And we need to cancel. So they now created courses. Okay, this is accounting. This is chemistry. Question. Hmm. The, the, the first person that became an accountant, who, who certified him? <laughs> so somebody sat down and said, come, let's create it. I do curriculum, that's so why I know what I'm talking about. Mm. I've created curriculum that does not exist before, that I created. And it's now existing because I created it. So somebody said, okay, let's do one, we call it accounting. But that person that was creating the curriculum, he himself is not certified. Mm. Because nobody certified. He's now the pioneer and the progenitor mm -hmm, of a new... Mm -hmm. That's how all these courses were created. And it was not... It was, schools were not created to make you rich. They were created to discipline and train you to function the way those that need you want you to function. Mm. So if you meet with elderly people in their 70s or in their 80s, and they are to ask you, they won't ask you what course do you study. They will say, what is your discipline? Mm. Mm. That's what they, they won't say, what course do you study? Yes. So they say, what is your discipline? That means what have you been disciplined to become? That's why all your life, you have an identity. You go to school. When you come out, they say, what's this? I say, I'm doctor. I'm engineer. You forget your name. You now start introducing yourself with the title they give you. Because you went to school to be trained to become what they want you to become. So there was nothing wrong in education mm -hmm. in the days of our parents. But what they did not realize was that the colonial masters were using this for a purpose. That is why we still have the problems today. So when you go to school, they teach you to become this, and then you become a But the world has evolved. We have moved from industrial age now. We are now in the age of technology. We are in what we call the fourth industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. The fifth one is imagine now. So all those things now, don't forget that when we were growing up, if you say you want to be an actor, you say, ah, hear me, you want to be a footballer, mm. hey, village people. Today, now everybody wants to try to be a footballer. But all those things have now expired. Now everybody wants to move to the next level, IT. Tech. and all the tech. So, tech that's the way. so now, <laughs> when you go to school, you learn, you come to use. But in order for them to keep you for five years or four years, they have to teach you what you need and what you don't need. Mm. 
and most of the textbook were given by the Westerners mm -hmm. to deceive you. That's why they would say Mongo Park came to discover you. Mm -hmm. Are you are you all right? Mongo Park. So you, you exist. Then somebody can't discover you. If you didn't exist, will you be discovered? <laughs> you say you are discovered. It's because of all these problems. So now, eight over eighty percent of what you learn in school today is useless when you graduate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Over eighty percent. Yes. Over it's useless. Why the YDX? Mm -hmm. Over eighty percent is useless. <laughs> now, number two, the world that existed. When you do, is it the matric they will do first? I mean, mm. communication. Mm. Matric first, <laughs> communication last. The world that existed when you did matric, by the time you are doing convocation with the next gown, that world is no more in existence. Because every five years, there's a new world. 19, 20, 2000, uh, 2019 and now are two different worlds. Mm -hmm. Pre COVID, post COVID. Mm. Mm. Before, in 2019, nobody will ask you, is it Vatwa? Mm. Mm. It was not in our vocabulary. That's a new world. Before 2019, nobody will say, I want to work remotely. So if you are still now oppressing, no, you cannot do this. It's because you are still an analog mind in a yes. digital age. Mm. You don't realize that things have changed. Mm. Mm. So companies are now rewriting policies, rewriting HR policy. Why? Because it's a new world. So people that are now telling you go to school, go and study this, go and study that, they are not bad people, but they are expired people. Mm. They are sincere, but they are sincerely wrong. They are telling you to go and do something that is useless. They are telling you to go and prepare to solve problem of yesterday mm. instead of preparing you to solve tomorrow's problem. So today, if like 15 years ago, if you say you are a drone pilot, it's not, it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm into animation. I'm into gaming. It doesn't exist. So if you now go to your mother now, your father, mother, maybe like chief, we dress like you say, uh, daddy, uh, and, uh, and uh, study <laughs> animation. So, what, I, what, I mean, what? <laughs> Are you an animal? <laughs> Are you an animal? <laughs> That's the way it true, is. True. Many of the comedians, footballers, actors, and actors today, their parents disowned them when they went to Nollywood. Mm -hmm. Disowned them when they went to music. Today, everybody wants their children too. That's the same way parents are disowning their children now. For saying, you are just jobless, you don't want to go to school. What is animation? What is this? Because they don't realize. So, in our own days, people were sent to school to go and study a course that will put a prefix before their name. Yes. Mm -hmm. Engineer, doctor, Barista. architect, barista. Lawyer. Because most of the parents wanted to live Barista. through the life of their children. Mm. Yeah. So what they could not achieve, they want to achieve I'm through the life lawyer. of their children. children. I'm, I'm a doctor. I'm a but now those things are they are useless <laughs> now. <laughs> so am I saying don't go to school? No, we need to redefine the education. As a matter of fact, you can go to my YouTube channel at Dr. Lumide Manuel on YouTube. I just did a series this last October. So most of those series you people see is October I do because the whole of October in our church, I focus on finance. So it was October 2022 that I did before you joined the Jackpot bandwagon. I did a whole series on that just to help because nobody said don't Jackpot but face reality before you go. Then I've done savings culture. Now I've now done redefining education mm. part one to four just to help you understand. Look, all this one we look, one of my guys because many parents now, the majority of what they spend their money on is our strength feeding and school fees. Yes. To go and spend money. Many of us keep our life on hold to train children for 15, 17 years mm. to go and study a course that will be useless to them and useless to us because we are still living in those days. So many of these courses, they are no more relevant. So go to school to study a course that will solve today and tomorrow's problem, problem. not yesterday's problem. Because with the advent of AI, fourth industrial revolution, animatics, robotics, 3D printing, forget it all. All these courses you are studying is useless. So if you say you are doing medical doctor, medicine is expiring. Right now, medicine has expired up to 70%. We are 30% of medicine because there is nothing you want to do in medicine that AI cannot do, that machine cannot do, that robots cannot do. So if you are going to study medicine now, you are wasting your life away. Mm. And people are still starting now. They are entering school year one mm. to go and do seven years and they will spend 50,000, 100,000. They will spend money, dollar, borrow money, student loan for the next 15 years. Now, why am I saying don't do that? Because the need are limited. So if we used to need 2 billion doctors, now we need 500,000. Just using that as a status. Mm -hmm. So the need is now reduced. And if all of you are rushing there, you will have nothing to do. So go and do my research. Fact check this. Mm -hmm. Majority of people now have master's degree that they are not using. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why? Because by the time they finish school, no job. Oh yeah, Kuku will say master. Sai will say master. They'll do master. By the time they now want to get a job, they will now use the BSc to go and get a job because they can't get a job. So there are a lot of people with masters now working with the lower degree. So what is all that? You're a master over nothing. Why? Because schools don't teach you financial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So everybody's going to school. When you now finish the school, you now want to look for a job. Who should now create the job? Mm, that so you're any looking education for. that is not teaching you how to become a job creator is a useless education. Mm. Any education that is not equipping you to begin to earn and add value to the environment is a expired education. So we're not saying don't go to school, mm -hmm. get us right. Mm -hmm. But we're saying if you are going to go to school, the way the creator intended it is, everybody is born with gift, talent, and potential. Mm -hmm. 
Everything that the spider needs to spin a web is inside the spider. Mm. Your gold is tied to your gift. Your treasure is tied to your talent. Your profit is tied to your potential. So the way you're supposed to do is discover what you have. Then you now go and train to develop what you have. Mm. Then you deploy it. So if you know you are... People have studied medicine that are now fashion designer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People have studied architecture that are now cooks. So if you know you are a cook... Once you have discovered that it's cooking, you know, go to cooking school straight. Simple. Spend one year and start selling. So um, that have even studied a particular um, um, course have also been able to use modern means now to reach out to people mm -hmm. and teach. For example, yeah. a Proco doctor is a very good example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, he's using social media as a viable tool to reach out and teach people. Mm -hmm. But I also want to ask, it, it would appear like, you know, it is... A system that is in place, like what you have said, to make it to make people go in a certain direction. But, 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 but before we go there, sorry, he said something that when when you when you realize what it is that you have inside, learn I and mean, go and study that. Now, how do people realize that thing that they have? Because I've had this question asked so many times. How do I know my gifts? Organi, do you know you can act? You know you can present? You know you can do this? How do I know mine? I, so how would you say that they can find out what gifts they have okay, so that so they can horn it more? Let me let me run through that. Uh, coincidentally, the answer is actually in the, the School of Money book, uh, Things with the Book. Mm. But you see, number one, that's where parenting starts from. Mm. Unfortunately, we have a lot of children are getting married to children dysfunctional man getting married to dysfunctional woman starting dysfunctional marriages raising dysfunctional children mm. and that's why we have a dysfunctional society normally it is the parents job mm. to identify you don't have children god gives you children, children to be a steward over them part of what you steward is to steal the children are arrows you arrow does not fly arrow cannot do anything you have to you are the bow they are the arrow mm. so when god gives you an arrow you are supposed to now Shit shoot them. The more you pull them back, the more they can go further. Mm. So you are supposed to look at it. I think this girl likes this. So many people have discovered that their daughter likes dancing and acting. Never. My daughter dance. I know she must be medical doctor. They now divert the destiny of their children. Mm. So it's when you identify, you start sending her to ballet school, start sending her to music school. But before you know it, by the time she's 16, she's already having her own business and she's doing what she needs to do. So it begins with parents identifying it. If parents don't identify it, then these are the things you need to look for. So if you are listening to me right now, number one, what do you love to do? What is that thing that you love doing it? Mm. That you just love it? What is that thing that if you are doing it, you don't get tired. It comes easy. It just comes easy. People will struggle. I've written over 100 books today. How did I know I was good at writing? It's this, I just love writing. And what is that thing that is so easy for you to do, but difficult for others to do? Too. Because when I discovered this writing, I was in school in Polytechnic, and then we're in what they call this, uh, is it literally a debate or this press club or something? Mm -hmm. So they'll just say, write about this, uh, submit next to it. One day I just reach out, the next day I say, ah. I say, ah, this is your flow. Ah. Then I would hear people say, I've been trying to write a book for three years. I said, ah, they have writer's block. I'm like, ah, what's that? Me, where are they? I've, I've written mm -hmm. eight books in one day before. This school of money, I wrote it in nine days. This one, I wrote it in five days. This book here, I just went to my house in London, sat down for one week. Bah, no sleeping. Blah, 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 just That's what I write. People wonder, say, is it goes, no, I type. I used to write with paper and viral. I only recently started typing. I'm old school like that. Why is grace? So when I realized, that, oh, this thing is grace, I sat down there. I began to develop it. So what then what is that thing that even if they don't pay you, you will still do it? Yes. Mm. Those are your passion. <laughs> then number four, what are the things that people see and say about you? Mm. You see a lot of people, they say, ah, you two talk. Oh, you know, those are, that means something about your mouth. There's something about your mouth. So when a woman was talking about the fact that they say your, your, your child talks too much, he talks too much, he talks too much, he too, they complain, complain. God say, why are you complaining? Pray for him that mm. God will give him something to say mm. that people will pay for. Mm. Mm. And that's how the woman changed it. And the, the guy is a major guy now, charging $40,000 to do one hour speech. Mm. So you, what are the things that people are saying about you? Sometimes you are not a pastor, say, I pastor this. They'll be calling you a lawyer, a lawyer, hey, engineer. They are calling you what they are saying. Mm. Next, what are the things that you find, people find it easy to support you about? There are some things you want to do, nobody wants to support you. But some things, they say, if you want to do that, I will support you. Say, ah, why am I? Because provision. Where there is a vision, there is a provision. Mm. So pro, we go for vision. So whatever you find it easy for people to support you, when you ask for it, people are ready to help you. Even when you're there, if you are ready for this, I will do it. Ah, why are they ready to pay for this one where I want to do? They're not ready. That means there's something there. Yeah. So those are all the signs that what are the things that you can give 100% of your life to? Mm. That if that's all you have to do, you do it. Those are the pointers to what your passion is. What are the experiences you have gone through that you have conquered? 
because God always brings us out of a misery and create a ministry out of that misery. Mm. So most of the time, people that are into healing ministry, they have been sick before. Mm. People that are into prosperity ministry, they have been poor before. Mm. Most of the time, God brings you out to send you back to where he brought you out from, to go and set people free with the same freedom he has given you. Mm. So, But in this part of the world, we want to hide our past and hide our experiences. Mm. But those are the pointers to your future because vision is hindsight based on, uh, b- vision is foresight based on insight with the benefit of hindsight. Mm. So vision is foresight. Ah, where do I see God taking me to? From the way I'm feeling, I think this is the direction. Based on that experience, I think that's why I went through it. That's why I went through that. This is where I should go. That's what vision is. It's the unfolding of that dimension. So, I mean, sir, so you talked about the, like, doing what you love. I know a lot of people that have done what they love, <laughs> but because they did not know the business aspect of it, mm. they ended up poor. Yeah. And I think that the business aspect of it also has to do with schooling, going to some sort of school. No school. If you know. Being educated. Being, Being educated, educated, yes. <laughs> Being educated, going to some sort of, you know, place where you get educated on the yeah. business aspect. A lot of people delve into what they love so much. Oh, like, oh, you, I love to dance. Cook and you go, rice. I love to cook. <laughs> and in fact, I'm going to use myself as an example. I was, my rice is awesome. So I would cook and I would give and I would give and I would sell for a particular price. And one of my customers was like, this is not the price I'm buying it at this place. But this is two times better than this other okay, place that yeah. I'm buying it from. Why are you underpricing yeah. yourself? Okay. I had to sit back and... So let me help you understand. Now listen, for you to ever succeed in business, mm. you need technical skills and business skills. So you are a good cook, technical skill. You don't, it doesn't mean you succeed in business. You are a fashion designer, you can sew clothes. It doesn't mean you succeed in fashion business. So you need business skills. So now you can cook, that's technical skill. Do you know how to get customer? Mm. Do you know how to price? Mm. Do you know how to manage money? Do you know how mm. to manage crisis? That is business skill. So what needs to happen is you now need to partner. So you have the technical skill, and then you get someone that has a business skill, and then you run a restaurant. You are behind the scene, making sure the food is good, all the recipe is good, but the person is the one in charge of the business. You may even be the owner that have 80%, but the person is the one everybody will know that has the 20%. So he's doing the show, you are doing the business. But if you have ego, that they must know me, now me get the business, show me for poster, show me for this, then you are not ready. Mm. Because you achieve more when you don't care who gets the credit. Mm. Mm. But when you want to be the one, think about it, all the musicians we know today that we are shouting that they are making this, do you know they have manager? Do you know mm-hmm. they have manager? The manager mm-hmm. is making more money than them. Yeah. The people that manage them are collecting 70%. Mm-hmm. All this one that they shout in the game, now 30% though, now they shout though. Somewhere they collect 70, in name, no day anywhere. It's mm-hmm. just the one place, they do the business, nobody know them. Why? Because see, anytime you see anybody's name on Forbes list, they are all poor people. All those people who see on Forbes list, billionaires, they are all poor people. The richest people in the world, even Forbes, the entire Forbes family, they don't bond them well to mention the name of the rich person. Because they will call all the Forbes people together and say, see now, are you yes. all right? From your grandfather Forbes to now, yes. who gave you the authority to mention my name? Who are you to even call my name? Yes. But now we are celebrating Forbes because there is what they call hold money. The rich, the real rich people, you don't see them on social media. You don't see them posting anything. So when you see all these small boys that have not seen anything now, bah, I bought car, I bought this. They are posting everything and frustrated everybody. Even the house where they borrow, <laughs> even the house where nobody their own, they are posting. No, no, no. Have you seen that going to come to post? I bought this car, I bought that car. No, because if you have it, you have it. Mm. Most of these people that are flaunting it, they have a reason behind what they are doing. Do you know that people are going to, you know those cars at the airports? That they will put there at mm. the airport. People mm. are going there to take pictures. Say, this is my latest car, landing now. Oh, those, those advert cars. Those advert cars. People are doing that. <laughs> no, no, okay. I, I don't know who saw. You know, my car is out there. I'm a pastor on, in church on Sunday. Yeah. People will be going near my car. They'll be taking pictures. They'll be doing I say, nah, wow. Mm. Maybe they won't tap from the grid. It's for the SSC. It's for the SSC. The grid of the automobile. What are they tapping? Because they're ready for pastors. Can you tap to become a pilot? All those are all the nonsense. Can you tap to become a medical doctor? What are you tapping? It's covetousness and greed. Mm. Person who don't work for 35 years, you won't tap. You are 26 year old. Now, so that they tap. Most of because you see, look, I've told you earlier on, religion is more dangerous than the devil. Listen to me. Mm. Ignorance is not a demon. You can't cast it out. Mm. 
Many of the problems in our culture is ignorance. And you cannot pray your way out of a problem you behaved your way into. Ew. So ah. people come to church mm. and they want a pastor to lay hands on them to become what they are not. I can't lay hands on you. I can't anoint you to become a pilot. So all this anointing for prosperity, anointing for this, you are just, because see, we live in a poor environment. Mm. Over about 75% of Nigerians are poor. United Nations defines poverty as living below $2 a day. Extreme poverty as living below a dollar a day. So there's extreme poverty on the continent. So because majority of people are poor, religion thrives in the midst of poverty. That's why many of the people that are jacked by now, they are not going to church again. Because when you are in a, look, let's go back. In those days when there was no um, GSM, mm. have you forgotten that we used to go to night there? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we go to somebody, they, they would do the. Yes. Grrr, yes grrr. We I don't know phone. how you guys are. Yeah. Grrr, grrr. yeah. yeah. The way we did it. No, no, she doesn't. I was in the program. I think I was in the program. Then there was a time we would buy one car, we would go to a night there. Night You go to put them. Now, all those times, that was a level. Why? Because it was a time of life and that is different from this time of life. But look at what's happening now. A lot of people, you now come to church, pastor should lay hands on you. So when they now go abroad, those days we used to pray for dialing tone. Ah, when you say, ah, oh Lord. Then, <laughs> hey, hey, you now think that is your faith. But now, when GSM came, do you pray for dialing tone again? Mm -hmm. So what was that prayer you were praying? It's useless prayer. You were no, the, it was never really a prayer. You're just wasting your time away. Wow. People are praying to the oh Lord, make me a millionaire. God cannot answer that prayer because God doesn't have money. He can't give you what he does not have. They don't spend money in heaven. So where will you, where will he see it? The security printing and ministry commission is not in heaven. So when you are praying for God to give you money, he can't give you money. He said, I will give you, I've given you power to get wealth. He gives power to get wealth, not wealth. You have to now use the power to create the wealth. If you have the power and you are not using the power, you are a powerful poor man. Yeah. <laughs> so you now want me to anoint you. So can I anoint you to be a pilot? Can I anoint you possible. to be a medical? So why can possible. I? How can I now anoint you to be rich? So Some people will tell you why that. because whatever you multiply by zero equals to zero. The anointing is powerful. The anointing is real. The anointing is tangible. But once the anointing comes in contact with zero knowledge, the anointing will be suspended, waiting for knowledge to catch up. Mm. So if you come to church now and I say today we are having anointing to drive a car, mm. and I anoint all of you, you can't drive. Mm. But is that anointing powerful? It's supernatural. But supernatural is super plus natural. Mm. So I've released the super. You now have to go and get the natural to connect to it, to produce the supernatural. More. The super will remain super without the natural. Natural will remain natural without the super. It's a combination of the super and the natural mm. that produces supernatural. So when I do that, I say, oh, we have an anointed to go and drive. You now go to driving school. If get you it. now go to driving school, if it was supposed to take you one month in three days, that's you just like you are catching. Sorry, it. Sorry. Nothing has met sorry, sorry. Wait. Real yeah. quick, real quick. Yeah. We're gonna need a sorry, hold on. Real quick. Yeah. Um, when you say you said something about prayer right now, that okay. you can you pray to God to make you a millionaire. What if you actually pray to God to make you a millionaire and he sends someone like David to give you like 20 million <laughs> and you start a business from that? Is okay. that prayer not answered? Okay, so you see, one thing you need to understand is this. Thank God I'm here so I can help you. Mm. Mm. You see, if I give you 10 million now, you are not a millionaire. You have millions. Yes. Mm. A millionaire is who you are. Millions is what you have. Mm. Hey! Hey! So when you understand the way this works, so if you are a five million naira person mm. and I give you 20 million, until that 20 million becomes five million, your brain will not work. Mm. Mm. You will waste it. You will give people, you will buy what you don't need because everything, money will come to your level of internal atmosphere. The more you learn, the more you earn. Your learning capacity determines your earning capacity. And if you, so if you're a family, so you buy iPhone, buy this, spend money. Why you remain five million? Because yeah, what do I do with this money? That's when your brain will start working. Mm. Is that somebody that jumps out of a that three thousand uh, bungee jumping? They now say, why is ten thousand? Remove your parachute. That's when your brain will work. If you are a ten million person and I give you one million, that money will go to ten million by period of time. So most of the time we are thinking of oh, Gen 2K, give me this, give me that. No, no, no. Become. Read your Bible. This mm. born again, born again thing we are talking about. Read it. When the man came to Jesus, we are always thinking, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Yes. He's focus on what, what must I do? And God said, no, except a man, be. You must be. Being is more important than doing. Mm. Mm. When you become it, you have to become rich to attract riches. You have to become wealthy to attract wealth. So you have to focus on becoming 
the kind of person that can be entrusted with See that money. See it to get it. So you have to become it. Eesh. So what was I do? What's my, so when I'm saying what I'm saying, I know what I'm talking about. You have to become it. So we should focus on becoming the kind of person that can be trusted with that kind of resources. Because there's kingdom wealth, there's worldly wealth. In the kingdom, kingdom wealth is not acquired. Kingdom wealth is entrusted. Mm. He has to trust you before he can put wealth in your hand. In the world, you can make money through Babylon and all those stuff, but at the end of the day, you see what happens to the life of people. What of people that they tell you, just like you said, <sighs> tapping. You, you cannot tap to become a pilot. Some people on social media, I mean, personally, I, I'm against posting all those things because to me, it doesn't make sense. Some people tell you, no, if you don't post, it will not ginger other people. It will not do this one. Like when you give, you need to post that you are giving so that it will ginger other people to go and give. What do you have to say about that? And now you see, one thing you need to understand is that the social media world, because of this clickbait, you know, monetization of social media, people just look for something to trend so that something will flow. So, and I, I think I said it, and I don't know whether it's before or during the show. Mm. Once you have taken your case to the public domain, don't blame anybody for whatever they mm -hmm. say. So as far as I'm concerned, um, it's called social media. It's not spiritual media. <laughs> it's social media to do social things. Because the people that created it didn't create it for church. Nobody church created mm. And so all those people doing those things, they are fulfilling the agenda okay. of the capitalists that created the platform. That's why they are putting money so that you can continue to do, create lies, come up with stories that does not exist, just to trend. Because you are helping them to become richer, and reach out every day. So if someone says, I want to give a testimony, must your testimony or your something be on social media? But because that is where people's thoughts and ideas are influenced by the media. So the media, look, one thing, look listen to this. Have you noticed? Because by virtue of what I do and all the, you know, I, I, I do a lot of stuff. I know things and I look at it. Have you noticed? Go to the newspaper stand today or tomorrow. Every newspaper is carrying the same headline but they are not owned by the same person. Mm. So where do they get their news from? It means somebody is feeding everybody. Mm. 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 Somebody is feeding every newspaper, the same headline, 20 newspaper, North, South, East, and West, that doesn't have the same owner, but everybody has the same headline. Why? Somebody is feeding them. There are people behind the scene that controls what you see. They have decided on what they want you to believe. They have decided on the way they want you to think, and you keep falling into the prey, and you keep... Pre there is programming. They program you, and you follow the program. If they say, this is what we want to do now, that's what will happen. We were talking about a group of people. Yes. They, and everybody now, before now, if you saw it, you would have said never. Mm. But now everybody is sitting it down is watching okay. it. They have to decide everybody. Why? It's a program. Now, go back. Let me take you to America. This one you can easily remember. Before Obama ever became the president, they started doing two major programs. One, Madam President, a movie, a series in America yes, where the yes, president was a yes, woman. With a female the second woman. one, 24. Yes. A series where the president was a black man. Yes. They were doing that because they already knew that Hillary and Obama wow. were going to be contesting in another eight to 10 years time. They programmed that thing and they were programming everybody's mind to see a black president, to see a female president. So that by the time it will happen, Nobody will argue with it. Before Donald Trump ever came to say he wanted to be a president, he has been saying this is 80 something. We throw it out, mm -hmm. test the water. Then the case called, if you want to do this, even in Cartoon Simpsons, yeah. they were putting they were it putting out. It. So they now came up with this uh, uh, that scene he was doing, uh, you are fired. Yes, are apprenticeship. Fired. Apprentice. Apprentice. They came down, entered. When they say, now you have the crowd. Bah. The guy came, became president. So the media shares it. So social media now. These people are making stupid money. Hmm. They are sitting down, coming up with cartoon, pranking, uh, comedy skit, everything. You are thinking that the guy is intelligent. There are people sitting in that zone. Oh, this is the next thing you should push now. This is the next thing you should push now. All of you push this, push that. And you see everybody pushing the same thing. Before you know it, they are shaping the mind and the consciousness of people and they are messing up our world. Hmm. Hmm. Cool. They know they teach this one for London Business School. And it's really very, very clear. And, you know, just listening to this conversation, you know, reminiscing on how many years that one must have spent to acquire education and getting to know certain elements that if you put them to use or you deploy the right uh, action, mm. you're definitely going to see results. It's really very, very the, there's, there's, mind blowing. There's, there's, going, going back to your interview that I watched on TVC, a lot of things I'd like to drag from that interview. Okay. There was a particular one that you mentioned about who taught us that we have to go to school, who 
told you that you have to eat three square meal? Who told you that this has to be this? Who told you that you have to do this? And in the comment section, I saw a lot of Gujos talking. This person, you you said, if you eat one or eat uh, Duam, um, uh, zero one, one or zero one zero, you not go die yeah. or one zero one. Who told you lunch time? Uh, break uh, lunch is twelve o'clock. Who told you it's Zuzu time? How about eat in the morning? They eat at night. You know, I saw a lot of the comments and it also talked about you know the dollar rising. It will continue rising. I'd, I'd like you to like relieve those things that okay, you said. So, um, one of the things we need to understand is that you see we are deceiving ourselves hmm. if we don't face reality. And I think one of the things I said um, in that broadcast was, number one, let's look back. Since 1999, have we ever had any better government? Mm. Retrogressive. It, get, it kept getting... Very soon now, they will say, well, he's a good man. <laughs> oh, people are saying it already. People are saying it already. Saying it. Saying it already. Oh, a, a government a that man. took us like 35 years backward. <laughs> when they came in, they first spent like the first four years blaming the Jonathan government. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, but people keep forget. We have selective amnesia. We forget. So, we have never had it. So, once you have that at the back of your mind, then don't put your hope on anybody. Whether it's APCO, PDPO, uh, Labour, Kwakwa, so anybody, everybody's the same. Let's all fool in ourselves. The OB, mm -hmm. they were all shouting, is it not from PDP? No, be all of them, they there. So, what are you people talking, just wasting your time? You see, most of the time, we are not, these people are all from the same box, from the mm. same pot. And my own challenge is that, how do we reduce ourselves to a level where the only option we have are old people. Uh. And all of us now see it as an option. <laughs> and we are not ready to face reality. When America started putting old people in the presidency from Donald Trump, look at America today. Look at the old one we did there now. Mm -hmm. Now Trump won't come back. You, these people are, you see, all these people are old. They can never lead you into a future that they cannot be a part of. Mm -hmm. Because they don't know, they, they are all analog. They can't help you. I get what I'm saying. The president, governor, uh, president, Tinubu cannot help Nigeria. Atiku cannot help Nigeria. Ubi cannot help Nigeria. We are the solution to Nigeria, all of us citizens. If there's going to be... Na I wrote a book. I have a book called Betting a New Nigeria. It's a book. You can get that out. There can never be national transformation without two things. Transformational leaders and patriotic citizenship. Yes. <laughs> but the problem is the citizens are waiting for the leader to be transformational before they become patriotic. The leaders are waiting for the citizens to become part before they become so it's the chicken and egg. Because a transformational leader, many of the things that is needed in Nigeria, you have to do it and not benefit from it. Yeah. So one of the signs of a transformational leader is that they are willing to sacrifice their comforts for the comfort of others. Okay. Every nation we see today, there are founding fathers that paid the price but did not benefit from it. Yes. Yeah. But today, because they have eight years, they want to pay the price. And benefit, benefit from, from it. it. That is why, because for instance now, so talking about that, so that's where, where I started from. And I said, look, if you look at what the present government is doing, they are mm. doing the right things. The policies they are bringing are the right a policies. A lot of people will disagree. Yeah, I'm going somewhere. They are policies. But you see, there's a gestation period for every policy. It takes between six months to two years for a policy to begin to show yes. that it's working. Yes. But you see, the problem now is not that they are doing the right thing. It's that they are coming up with the right policy but they are not subjecting themselves to what it will take. You are now telling everybody to tighten their womb. No, you're, you're not, not tightening tighten yourself. Mm -hmm. So that is the problem. Not that the policy is wrong, but the people putting the policy outside, they are not putting themselves under the policy. God is the one that created the world and brought the word. He brought himself under subjection to his word. He mm -hmm. magnified his word above right. his name. Yes. So that even though he created you can carry his word and say, God, you cannot do that. Yes. And he will submit. Yes. But these people are creating law don't pass one way. They will pass one way. Do you understand now? Mm -hmm. Why is it that you... I was still telling my guys, yeah, this country, that we, our journey is far off. Have you noticed that if you do anything wrong as a private car owner, they will catch you. Let all this uh, downfall. Ah. They, they are free. They are free. So how do you do selective law? Are mm -hmm. you thinking... Gov a, 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 so once you're a big man, you're free to go. So the policies are there, but they are not subjecting themselves <laughs> to it. That is why all of them are still buying car, the car with them, they buy, and they are still justifying it with bold face. But inside that place, the, the Labour Party people say they won't collect. <laughs> so what are we? So everybody is the same. Just like, so we are the ones that we come together to say, look, because if it's going to be, it's up to you. If you are not part of the solution, you are indirectly part of the problem. Evil tribes when good men do nothing. Mm. 
So let's forget about what somebody else is doing. Let's love our country, say good things about our country, and play our part. But when it comes to this hardship, we just some, some somebody are, said are, it's still going to get harder. Some, hey. some, 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 somebody said something that for Nigeria to work, yeah. it has to first fail. Now, Does that make sense? Yeah, you see, um, because of the our problem, part of our problem is democracy. Yes, because democracy was handed down to us by, you know, Them. the Western world. Mm -hmm. And they handed it down to us, whereas we already had what was working before they came. Yes. We had the Obis, we had the Obas, we had the Emias, we had the people, village leaders, and everything was working. They met, don't forget that they came here to loot Bini Empire. Mm. They came, so, so these people that are coming to say, they were the illiterate that came here to meet. You mean, these were more intelligent than us. They now took us away from all our inheritance. Mm. And let me give you all these things are in the school of money now. So you used to go to farm, to farm. You had the massive plantation. They now told you, no, 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 don't do that anymore. You are not sure. Do come and become my gardener. Mm. And I'll give you salary. So you are sure of your income. So they gave gardener horticulture mm. a good title and attach regular income to it. Mm. You used to go to the market to sell food every five days. Your our ancestors didn't go to school, but they were all, they had common sense mm -hmm. and they were building houses and they were doing well. Then I said, no, you cannot be cooking. Come and become a chef and a steward. And then can wear will, uniform and wear, and wear uniform, and then I will pay you at the end of the month. And then if you do well, I will take you to my country. Hmm. I will teach you my language. You will become like me. They made their culture superior, their language superior. Today, mm -hmm. all of us are wearing their clothes, speaking their language. Today, now you are proud that your child cannot speak Igbo, your child cannot speak Yoruba, and something is actually wrong with you. You need deliverance. <laughs> Do you understand now? So you now say, don't, don't, don't speak English today, don't speak your better demo. They don't understand. And you are so proud and arrogant. Is that somebody saying, I use, you are proud in the hospital you use, you are a sick man. So that this is the hospital I use. Now, is that a point of pride? Mm, mm, that you are always mm. sick and you have a big hospital mm. that you go to? So they have messed us. So we have, we have been colonized. What we, they give us is dependence, independence. Mm. Is that somebody that you make to believe that he's free, but you hold something that will make him to keep Always coming to come you. Back. And that's that's where we are. So the economy is bad. It will continue to be bad because we are not a productive economy. And that thing you are saying can only happen in a system that is not democracy. Because in order for something to work, we might need to do maybe like a Thomas Sankara, carry all of them, put inside one place, just kill all of them, then start afresh. But it doesn't work like that. It's something for that to happen, not in a democracy. You which can't do many things which means democracy. We, which means we're not even getting any better. Democracy cannot no, but, but, work for but, us. We need to create our own kind of democracy. That's why Rwanda Rwanda is not a democracy. Do you understand now? Yes. The democracy of Rwanda they created their own by themselves. By themselves, and so it's this working work for us. And it's working because in Africa you need what we call a. I, I don't want to use the word that people, but you need what I call a visionary dictator. Carrot and stick, kind of. The guy is a visionary, wants to help you, but if you do not say good deal with you, which is what, what, which is what has Kagame is doing. He has a heart to make sure that everything is right. Right. But he's a dictator. Mm. But he's not a dictator of to ruin your life. He's a dictator of this thing. You must, if you right. pass one where I don't care who you are, you go to jail, you steal, you go to jail. Look how mm. many people stealing billions. They are still walking around. Ah. What are we talking about? So, but Pastor Olumide, yeah. it is clear that, because it appears like when we discuss the problem, you know, the solutions are complex. The solutions are not complex. It, it is because we are not doing the right things yeah. to address the issues. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you said if we go back to the, since the return to democratic rule in 1999, it would appear like things have gone from bad to worse. Yeah. But in the life of public officials, for example, we see them living, living large. Mm -hmm. You gave the example of, you know, the SUVs that as soon as this administration, sorry, the 10th Assembly, they started purchasing these SUVs. So for them, they know that they can enjoy this luxury. But the majority of the people should continue to wallow in abject poverty and penury. Recently, the federal government, you know, would to, to, to consider, let me, I don't know, for, the, for want of the correct term, they are subsidizing people that are traveling for pilgrimage. <laughs> you are spending, you are spending billions to subsidize somebody's personal uh, belief. Uh, uh, belief or, or their, their pers to, personal project. Mm. <laughs> but when it comes to the, the things that affect the people, we begin to come up with, with problems. Now, you know that it is okay for you to go and get the best of Medicare abroad, but you're not going to ensure that we fix these are our problems. So sometimes it would appear like it's complex, and that is why many people desperately begin to look to God 
or hope that Angel Gabriel will come down from heaven <laughs> with a manual to solve these no, problems. Uh, See where lights I, they go now. Electricity now, they're about to remove the, the subsidy. No, the minister has said that it, 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 that paying subsidy is subsidy no longer is gone. sustainable. But uh, if you go through the history and you check how much we they how, uh, how much would they generate so many years ago, and now you go ask, say, what has gone wrong? Yeah. If you keep yeah. doing the wrong things, you cannot get the right, right results. Answer. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So it, it's sad. It's sad. So I don't know. The, you don't throw too many things for ground. Mm-hmm. So we say, if we pick everything, another two hours. Well, but Pastor no. Lumide, we are, great, we are really very, very grateful for your time. We know, say, plenty things they will go touch. For day, we'll by go six hours. By the special grace of God. You go definitely come, come back, again. Yeah. and yeah. we go we go focus on so many things. But one very important thing when you don't talk, when I go, want make everybody go with today and I say, God don't imbue us. Mm-hmm. Eh? Everybody they special in the way when God don't create us. Mm-hmm. But you need to be able to identify. Your own. You need to be able to identify that which God has imbued in you and do well to make the best of it. And parents have a very, very important role to play. Dr. Lumide gave us the, uh, Pastor Lumide gave us the example of um, the mother that would say, you talk too much, you talk too much, you talk too much. Mm-hmm. But when he can't realize, say, that talk too much, where that picking they talk. Money. Now something when we say, if they use and well, <laughs> now see the person they benefit from him. So parents should always pay attention. Elderly people who should know, should always pay attention. Try as much as you can to identify quickly and see how you can guide them. Mm-hmm. Then our leaders, we beg Guna. Those when they those when they formulate these policies or mm. this curriculum, because me I have a uh, a background in history and international studies. Some of the things when we say I been first learn before I come they go further for for school. Come they meet radical lecturers <laughs> when go tell you say this doesn't even make any sense. Like the one about Mongo Park discovering uh, mm-hmm. River Niger, where people don't they live. They drink from the water. They use the water. They do everything. Mm-hmm. And these things are still in our curriculum. You have gone to the point where somebody even thought it was, you know, a genius idea to scrap history from yeah. the study because if you say, it gets on this way, you go study and it could be a problem. Yeah. But if you don't know who you are, how are you going to raise your head high and be very, very proud? They have to keep you poor and keep you ignorant to continue to control you. you ground and it. this is not a case of God forbid, or my case is different. Uh, God mm-hmm. forbid, but life permits. Hey, God Ooh. forbid your actions permit. God forbid your attitude permit. Hey. So God forbid is not a prayer. Pastor there are many things that God has forbidden that is happening because your lifestyle and your attitude is permitting it. Hey. Mm. Pastor Olumide, General Obasia, Calvary Bible Church. And for everybody, everybody where they go, Calvary Bible Church, people are lucky that you have... <laughs> Pastor Lumide. Every Sunday is Every a lecture. Sunday. It's a lecture, lecture day. Do you know what I mean? It's to be lectured. Do you know what I mean? To be it's lectured a lecture day. by him. <laughs> Most of all of you, shout out to all of you. Talking about what is inside mm. that, that is going to help you. Ezra, in Abuja, sorry, we're rounding up. In Abuja, when I was attending the church, I was attending, there was a lady that, that was a banker. I think she went with Inland Bank. That time we Inland Bank. Wow. Day. Inland Bank. So, after, for first timers, she, she didn't make, she could make tea, toasted bread. Everybody was always saying, yo! Who made this? Who made this? It was so good. Even there are some time for Thanksgiving service, she could make moi moi. Her moi moi. It was moi moi. It was moi moi, brah. <laughs> it got to the point, someone now advised her, yo, sis, hmm. the land bank you're working is taking away time from you. It's someone you're expecting someone to count something. Because salary is what they give to you to forget your dreams. Mm. This person has given you this, they keep giving you this money. It's only weekend that you get to do this. And everybody loves this thing you're doing. How about you start doing this for money? Small, small. Not just for first time commerce. Not just for only for Thanksgiving. This Start doing it extra. After service, anybody that wants to buy, they can buy. As first time as they chop, they can buy. Mm. This aunt is started making killer of a money. Now, we had three branches in one area. Now, the branch holding at the smaller branch. People started coming from the bigger Head branch button. to buy from that place. Sir, it didn't take her up to she six months. Branch there. She resigned. Oh. She had one of the two biggest stores when it comes to food Chai. in Apucha. Oh. Just, just make that move. No just need make to the fear. move. Make that move today. Some people are just scared. You can get this book, How to Create Wealth. And this one, School As of a Money. career person, the Entrepreneur's Guide to the Wealthy Place. <laughs> uh, how we go to give this book out now to the people in no, the world? No, this one, I, I, no, we get our, 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 our own. We have our own. We have our own. We won't give. We won't give. We won't give our people. Okay, so just in the comment section, eh, just 
Tell us why you need this book. Oh, give us no, 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 no. At what, at what age? Sponsors. They will give it to you. At what age did Pastor? At what age did Pastor Limidi start past, pastoring? Mm-hmm. So if you Tell want, you need if you want, mm-hmm. indicate. Mm-hmm. We're definitely going to ensure that you know we get these special copies to you. If you also want. Then you go go buy school of buy, money. Yeah. There, there's it. also there's also called the school of money. How to make, manage, and multiply your money. The entrepreneur's blueprint. And do you know what? He gets CD and he gets DVD, so he can be playing it in your car. If you're a lazy person, uh, it's the only Christians that can read no, this. No, not only uh-uh. Christians. No. Oh, it's only Christians that eat money. Calm no, down no, 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 I'm trying to educate them. This, that is not only Christians. You're going to do is this. So relax. Let me help to clear it. These are not religious materials mm-hmm. because you hear them calling me pastor, pastor. When you said there is no Bible there or no prayer point, or so that you will not say this one, not even born yes, again. Yes. These are books written by Doctor Olumide Emmanuel. Doctor Olumide. To be able to help people create wealth, so yeah. it's not a religious book. Yeah. So, but if you want the religious so. version, then you Come buy Pathway to Wealth. Okay. And then right now, I'm doing the School of Money intro every Sunday, eight to ten. They can go to Come the to website, church. go to my YouTube channel at. Dr. Olumide Emmanuel on YouTube is there. Last like, year, I did the New Rules of Love, part one to 30. This year, I'm doing School of Money, part one to 30. Two years ago, I did Growth Masterclass, part one to 30, just to continue to educate. Maybe the next people. time the next time he comes, he's going to do the New Rule of Love. Hey, right As I'm talking to the mainland. Monday.